you condemn me, then you're going to pay for your school fees. Some scholarships. This life, eh, you need to search well. There are some scholarships that is fully funded. Living allowance. They will still pay your accommodation. They will pay your flight tickets to and fro. <laughs> Hey, hey. There are plenty. Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you don't know me, my name is Donna Kwadu and I film about faith, beauty and lifestyle. And most especially, I'm taking you through my scholarship journey and how I got a fully funded scholarship to study in the UK. If you are subscribed to my channel, thank you so much for subscribing. If you are yet to subscribe, please click that subscription button that would really encourage me and motivate me to make more videos before i start before i start guys the love has been amazing the love has been immense from my last video if you have not watched my last video um i'll put the link up here please go watch it it was basically like an intro video talking about my life since my four years ago youtube video on my channel and honestly the love was so immense like i got so many encouraging words and feedback so you guys i'm so so grateful thank you so much for the support and for the love so going straight into today's video so like i talked about in my last video i'm going to talk about my scholarship experience how i applied for um, a fully funded scholarship and you know the whole process the whole journey and the reason why i'm doing this video is because i remember when um trying to apply for scholarships youtube was one of my main sources for information and for knowledge so there were lots of youtube channels and youtube videos that really really helped me when applying for my scholarship so i want my channel and my video as well to help as many people out there who are also in or like we said like currently in their scholarship journey or are thinking of applying for scholarships um before i go into the video or the main the main information i just want to say that right now if you are planning to school in the uk by september 2023 that's september of this this year this is like the time you need to start applying for schools and start applying for scholarships because um, most scholarship deadlines will probably end around may and most um, offers or admissions also to school in the UK will probably end around May as well. So you have this chance now. So please grab the chance. That is if it's something that you have been, you know, planning and thinking about. So this is the time you should start working on everything I'm going to talk about in today's video. So let's start from the basics. Um, I often do get this question a lot from people. Oh, how do you find scholarships? How did you start to apply for scholarships? And I always say this one thing, and people, maybe some people think I'm just being rude, but I'm, I'm literally not being rude. I'm just like saying it as it is. You did just need to do a simple Google search. That was what I did. A simple Google search. Fully funded scholarships in the UK. And that's why in my last video, I mentioned that you just need to focus all your attention and energy on one particular place. So um, I wasn't trying to apply for Canadian scholarships. I wasn't trying to apply for um, Australian scholarships or US scholarships. I was, I was focused on applying for just scholarships in the UK. So that is why I was able to narrow my search. So if you are trying to apply for different scholarships in different countries, it's going to be difficult because you will get a like broad information and then it will leave you confused and then you won't be able to meet up in time you know, to apply for everything so just put your focus on one thing in this video and in this channel mostly i'm talking about applying for uk scholarships because that's what i applied for and i'm currently on a uk scholarship so i'm not very conversant with us and Can canadian scholarships scholarships in other countries because i didn't apply for them so uh, if you are interested in applying for a UK scholarship, then please continue watching this video. So like I said, you just have to start with a simple Google search. Fully funded scholarships in the UK. That was how I started. So from there, you begin to narrow your search bit by bit. Now, the reason why I want, like I'm more specific, so it depends on what you want. If you type scholarships in the UK on your Google search, it will show you a list of all the scholarships available, fully funded, partial, um, just um, you know, paying your tuition fees or tuition fees with allowance, it will show you everything together. But if what you are looking for is a fully funded scholarship, then just put that in your search immediately. Fully funded scholarship, that is how you get 
information about scholarships that are now what does fully funded mean for those that may be asking fully funded means that basically your tuition is out of it so you are going to be your tuition is going to be paid for by the scholarship now there's also the partial funded meaning that for example they might just take like a tuition fee waiver so let's say for example your um, school fees is um, nine thousand pounds for example they can give you a tuition fee um, waiver of certain percentage or they might say okay they'll just move like they'll just give a scratch for two thousand pounds so basically you have to pay like seven thousand pounds from your pocket but the school or whoever is awarding the scholarship is paying two thousand pounds but fully funded means they're not going to pay for your school fees that is it's like your school fees is going to be paid for so even if your school fees is thirty thousand pounds you're not paying a dime for your school fees that's what fully funded means and now there are some scholarships that are fully funded with living allowance so living allowance means that there's a specific amount of money and they will give you every month or depending on what the scholarship is some scholarship they'll pay you every three months some they'll pay you at once the, for the whole course of your study that if it's a one year master's course or a two years master's course they will you know give you your, your living allowance for for that whole time duration and i just want to put it out there that most um fully funded scholarships don't fund two years master's course most times they fund only one year's master's course so you need to also you know be sure if you want if you want a two years master's course you need to be sure that there's a scholarship you know for that that's if you are interested in applying for a scholarship so yeah that's what i want to say so there's fully funded there's partial funded there's fully funded with living allowance and there are some scholar oh god there are some scholarships this life eh, you need to search well there are some scholarships that is fully funded living allowance they will still pay your accommodation they will pay your flight ticket to and fro there are plenty like not, not plenty but there are scholarships out there you just need to do your search guys you need to take out time to do your research so my, my my point basically is do your research on the kind of scholarship you want if you are fine with the school paying you know a partial fee for you and you have the money to pay for the rest then that's fine you can do that me i knew that i do not have when i saw the school fees my university now university of Sheffield. when i saw the school fees <laughs> Hey, hey, I looked at it. I said, hey, I don't have this money. Even if I know, I know that miracle, you no, know, God does miracles, but I know I knew that this money I don't have it, so it has to be a scholarship. So that's why I was, you know, focused on getting a fully funded scholarship. Now, what people don't tell you is that some people will say, Oh, a eh, tuition fee waiver, they'll just move to thousand pounds. You can raise the money. Let me, let me, let me tell you one thing, guys, it's not easy to raise money for your school fees. Even if your school fees is four thousand pounds, it's not that easy. Like people make it feel like it's easy that you just have to work. That fine, you have twenty hours per week as a student. You can work and all. Anyway, I'm going to do a whole. I probably do a whole video about this whole, you know, myths and you know how people mislead people about like studying in the UK and everything. But let me not digress. So basically, the first thing you need to do is to do your research i'm going to be looking at because i've listed like a few things down here so i don't forget some points another source of um information for me like i said earlier was youtube honestly youtube and i i'm going to i'm going to recommend some channels and i'm going to put them you'll see them in this video these were channels that really helped me i was getting information even the, the the scholarship i'm on right now i found it through a youtube channel like like this youtube channel i'm going to put in you know on the screen literally it was the the the, the youtuber made a video talking about like scholarships that are available and they were open and i saw it and i was like okay i'm just going to check it out and that was how i started my whole scholarship journey so youtube also is a very very useful source for getting information about scholarships so i'm going like i said i'm going to also put the links for this youtube channels in my description so that you can also check out their channels they usually give a lot of information about scholarships about studying in the uk and even not just uk scholarships as well like other scholarships in other countries so do your research please and please like you cannot skip that step if you are not willing to put in work to do research nobody just going to hand it to you and say oh Although some people do list out scholarships, but also still do your research as well, if you know what I mean. The second point, number two, is now you have done your research, right? You have seen the schools that have um, the kind of scholarship you are looking for. 
check out those screws now this is where the work is there's work in doing research but this second step too you will do work because it's not just it's not all schools that are offering for you for their scholarship that are offering your course you can actually do this number two as number one so you can first of all look for schools that are offering your course then now check if these schools are offering scholarships or you can do it the other way around look for schools offering fully funded scholarships and check if these schools are offering your your course anyway it's fine so the next what i did was basically after checking fully funded scholarships, i looked at all the schools thank you i don't want to forget this point so i'm going to i'm going to continue the second point i'm sorry the video is all over the place i promise you i wrote a whole point down but as i remember i just need to say it now there are different types of scholarships aside from fully funded partial funds. There's government scholarship and there's also the university scholarship. Now when you hear of Chivney scholarship, Commonwealth scholarship, um, Erasmus Mundus, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, scholarship. You see those are the government scholarships. Those are the ones that usually give like 30 people, 40 people, 50 people scholarships. Those ones, although they are actually competitive as well, because you could have, and it's usually like global, and most times usually like um, African countries that are usually giving out this scholarship. Like Commonwealth Chivney is mostly countries in Africa that are like that are eligible like if you are a resident or if you are a national of a country in africa you're eligible for this scholarship they're usually the ones that give plenty scholarships like i said like they're giving out 20 scholarships 50 40 most times they are government scholarships so what about government scholarships though as for like commonwealth and chivney which i know about you have to return back to your country after your master's so i don't know if it has changed now but at the time i was applying because i have also applied for a commonwealth i applied for the commonwealth shared scholarship in 2021 but i didn't get it i didn't receive the scholarship so one of the conditions there was that you have to return back to your home country that scholarship is sweet because basically it's fully funded you get living allowance they pay i think they pay for your accommodation they pay like clothing allowance too they pay your flight tickets is like literally beautiful sweet scholarship but that clause was the issue for me of going back to your country after just your master so you have to return back i do know i know that there are people that still stay back i don't know how they do it and i really don't have much information about it maybe maybe one time i'll bring because I, I do have some friends that are currently on the commonwealth and chimney scholarship so i'll probably get information from them or maybe ask them to you know join me in the video so they can explain what it's about i don't have like as much knowledge about those scholarships but what but that was that one thing i know so from the government scholarship you now have the university scholarships now you see those university scholarships very few universities in the uk give fully funded university scholarships and i don't know they might have their reasons but it's very rare most of the university scholarships i think the maximum i've seen that a university scholarship was offering was 10. that's the maximum i've seen i've not seen like 20 like the government scholarship but i've seen 10. so 10 and then the scholarship i'm on which is the alan and lester um charitable trust scholarship offer three yes so out of even if there are one million people applying for this scholarship they are giving only three people the scholarships so that was about the university scholarship but those ones don't have the clause that you have to go back to your home country after your master's so that's the advantage or the other side of the university scholarships so although they offer to very few people they don't have that clause and they are still very it's still very rare to find fully funded university scholarships now there are still other types of scholarships as well but the most popular ones are the government ones and the um, university ones so it's important for you to know which one you want and which one you would you know prefer to go for and if you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket you can apply for both government and university and you know see which one works out right now there's no harm and then another question that most people normally ask me is um, about application fee. When you're applying for the course itself, as after you have done your research, you must have probably checked your eligibility criteria, which I'll go into soon. Most, most UK schools, most, now not all, but majority of the schools, because I applied to a lot of schools in the UK, there was no application fee basically. So you really don't have to pay an application fee. 
but of course like i said do your research you know your due research and find out and be sure and if it's a few you can afford to why not now remember the first step do your research then also that do your research on the scholarship do your research on the course you want to study so you have seen that okay you have listed out so not another thing like that. i started listing out all the schools that are offering fully funded scholarships and all the schools that are also offering my course so i'm currently studying a master's in public health and international development which was the course i was looking for i was looking for public health courses but i was so glad this one came about so if you now find a school that is offering both fully funded scholarships and also or whether it's government scholarship that is fully funded then go ahead and check the eligibility criteria which is my number three points now most times people get sad and they didn't receive admission or they didn't receive scholarship and if you trace it back you realize that they didn't fit the eligibility criteria so every school has their eligibility criteria for admission and also for the scholarship so the eligibility criteria for scholarship might be different from that of the admission so you also need to check that as well so for example some eligibility criteria could be first of all um you what you had in your undergrad degree so maybe the course for example that you want to apply for says that you must have a minimum of two one or two two in your undergraduate you know, degree so if you see that okay you fit that this thing fine you checklist it i fit this criteria some schools and some schools will say that okay for this course so you must have a first class degree so if you had a 2-1 or a 2-2 and they specifically said it in the on the website that you must have first class please find another one because to be honest people get sad that they didn't get admission or file or they didn't get scholarships but it's clearly written there this is the criteria they want if this school is not if this school is saying that they want only first class they find another school or another scholarship that says okay we want someone with two one there's nothing wrong in having two one or two two but if this school is saying this is what they want they find another school like of course your energy on something else, so that you don't end up missing out on you know the deadline for a school that probably would have accepted you if you had a 2-1 or a 2-2 i don't know if you get what i mean so check those eligibility criteria do you understand so they will state it there most schools in the uk really don't say they want only a first class degree most schools especially like big schools like oxford cambridge i don't know but most schools in the uk will not like if you want an admission first of all they'll probably say 2122 like they might not say only a first class degree so you need to check it out as well for scholarships on the other hand if you're applying for a scholarship that maybe after you've gotten admission to the school the scholarship most scholarships not may not all but most of them would require that you have a first class degree now things may have changed and things are still changing and evolving so don't lose hope because i said they want a first class no check it they must say they want a 2-1 or a 2-2 so check it out before concluding okay so the number two eligibility criteria that most times i usually or i usually come across when applying for um, a course or even a scholarship is your ielts score if you are a national of a country that is regarded as non-english speaking you're going to have to prove your english language proficiency by submitting an ielts score or something like that so one of the mistakes i made when applying for scholarships the first time that was in 2021 i have not written ielts so majority of the times i was just like you know what i will submit my um a document from my school that shows that my courses or that my subjects were being taught in English and all of that. But we are even work. <laughs> but I didn't get scholarships then, of course, because I didn't have my IELTS. And that's why I think it's important for you to check the eligibility criteria as well. So um some schools now it's important to check the school's website. What exactly did they say they want to prove your English language proficiency? Some say okay, if you have an employment letter that shows that you are working in English and all of that then you can be exempted from it some will ask you to you know submit something like it depends on what the school is asking but majority of the time 
is always um for you to submit an IELTS certificate or IELTS score or just an English language test score to just show and prove that you know English basically. So um, if it's IELTS, for example, that is written in the school's website or the university's website, check out what is the minimum grade that you should get. So for my school, for example, the course I'm studying, you need to have a minimum overall of 6.5 in your IELTS and a minimum of six in each band so meaning that if you have 5.5 in any band at all whether reading or listening or whatever you are not eligible for admission or for the scholarship so you need to also check like what is the minimum band score that they want for your IELTS if you're submitting your IELTS certificate so it's also very very important to also check that so because I don't want this video to be too long, I'm going to divide it into two parts. So in this in this video, we've talked about the three steps, which is first of all, um, doing your research about the fully funded scholarships in the UK, doing your research about schools or universities that are offering the course that you want to study and are also offering fully funded scholarships, then also checking the eligibility criteria to be sure so that you don't you don't spend too much time trying to apply to a university that you don't fit the eligibility criteria. Meanwhile, you miss the deadline for a school or a university that you actually do, you know, meet the eligibility criteria. So it's very important for you to check that. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about the other points which I also have. So stay tuned for that video. Thank you so much for watching. If this part of the video has been enlightening, if you have gained some form of knowledge from it, please kindly like the video, share to someone that you know is on their scholarship journey and will definitely benefit from what I've said in this video. And please and please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can always be you know notified and you can know when i post you know or upload videos that would also be you know knowledgeable for you thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in the part two of the video bye